Okay, hi. Welcome to the stream, VOD viewers. Just had some technical stuff I had to deal with. Okay, I am actually properly ready now. Hi, everyone. Hope y'all are doing okay. Today we are going to be trying something new. And whoop! Yes, it worked! Hi, Ron. Okay, so I have Photoshop up here. I'm sure some of you have some familiarity with Photoshop. Uh, today we are going to make something, unlike most days where we just play games. Oh? Oh? That's not right. There we go. Okay, so if I, like, fucking draw on this, can you all actually see what I'm doing? You should be able to. Okay, cool. Okay, setting up a 1440p canvas. I haven't explained to anyone what's going on yet, so don't worry, you're not missing anything. Okay, so, I have a plan for today. I have been wanting for a while to have a stream interface. So, a place that we can put the chat, a place that we can put... Uh, a little agenda of things that I want to work on, a place where we can put a title of what the stream is supposed to be, just everything that I have wanted. Because so far, it has always obscured the view to have something going on. And we've always needed to scale down, uh, or we've always had stuff popping up over the gameplay rather than scaling the gameplay down a little bit. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move things around a little bit. I want to see... I want to see how they go. Okay, so... First of all... We need branding... Uh, oh, right, yeah. Sample, branding, friend of that. Sample thing for branding, okay. Plate. Overlay, version one. Cool. So, using some of what we already have for advertising as the basis, we're going to be making a larger overlay. And that full overlay is going to be covering a good portion of the screen. Okay, everything's rounded right now. I'm used to uh, everything I make being rounded because of the way I do my thumbnails. Because if you actually look at the way I do my thumbnails... The boxes that I use are always rounded. Okay. Now I need to actually be bringing in... ...proper colors. These are not the proper colors. And we're gonna have to size the boxes so that we can fit chat in somewhere. I need to be able to fit my, my VTuber model in somewhere. And everything else. So, I'm thinking we're probably going to go over here and do something kind of like this. 
However, we need to have a box that is 16 by 9 so that we can fill in fill in the actual space where the oh my gosh why are words so hard so i can fill in where exactly my picture is going to end up for the gameplay because that's what we're gonna be doing i was intending to do all of this stuff off stream and i realized why because I know some people actually find it interesting to watch how I do these things. Because not everyone knows how graphic design shit works. Oh boy, do I do a lot, do a lot of graphic design shit. Uh, okay, I need my Path of Exile screen God's ID. Not for this. What's this? Oh, that's cool. Very busy. But I mean... Such as the life. Okay, so that's a hundred percent. That is nineteen twenty by ten eighty there. I'm deciding I've decided that yeah, I am designing this in fourteen forty P because I want the I want it to be scalable going upwards whenever I'm eventually streaming in 1440, because I intend to eventually be streaming in higher qualities than 720. The main reason that I stream in 720p right now is not because I want to, it's because my internet straight up cannot handle 1080. I, in every way, am able to do 1080 except for my internet. And it would made it very choppy when I was trying to do 1080, so I don't do it anymore. When I when streaming actually makes me enough money that I can afford to pay more money per month for internet, I look forward to upgrading my internet like as soon as humanly possible. That is the plan. Okay. We want of the screen to be taken up anyway. Like, let's go over there. To do that, we are going to thing. Oops. We're having the overlay above or below the gameplay. If we have it below the gameplay, then if it's, it's if it's the bottom layer, then we can easily just go. I'm gonna say we could just go. And anything that's outside of the gameplay is just to predict their color. But that's actually going to be a lot uglier than if we put the overlay on top. It'll give us the, the opportunity to actually make some really pretty stuff, I think. Hopefully, that works out. Okay. I want to make sure that there actually is enough room to accept text. Because the we're going to be moving the text box for the chat into this area over here. Also, speaking of all that shit, this... I think this one's the better one. Okay. The tuber. Oh. Tubliver. 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 Okay, so that actually should be. That's actually like perfect, perfect right there. There's like there's just enough space that it won't get in the way of the actual gameplay. Though it doesn't have the proper visual spacing that I usually would like. If we were to go F F F11? What's full screen? There is a full screen view. I'm not crazy, right? 
I know fit. There we go. And then control zero fit to screen. Oh no, control zero is actual size. Okay, so my current VTuber avatar is bigger than seeing there. I think. Oh no, no, no! Do that. Uh, where's the size thing? I'm not used to scaling things at the bar. To scale them with. Get to find out how good or bad I am at Photoshop now. I promise I'm trying. I'm not very good. No, I I am actually pretty good. It's just. I just struggle sometimes. Okay, well. Right, that's. I swear, every time I do this, I get. I'm, I remember how rusty I am at certain functions. Okay. Well, that is still a little bit smaller than I'm used to. Do I need to have this entirely in the overlay or not? Honestly, I don't think I need to have it entirely in the overlay. My VTuber avatar. I think I'm fine not doing that. What is the exit full screen button? Oh, just escape. That makes sense. Using all these things I never use. <laughs> I never go full screen in Photoshop for some reason. Actually, it feels like I would usually do that, but I don't. Okay. The VTuber avatar is not... It doesn't feel very centered because of the fact that there's more space on the right side than on the left side. Maybe it would be better to have... It would be better to move it. Nope, not you. You are on top, that's good. Supposed to be on top. You are not supposed to be on top. In fact, you're supposed to be behind everything. Nope, so bad. Okay. Should I best fit? If I cut off a portion of my shoulder there, I should be fine. Huh? I might actually need to scale the way that my avatar looks for this. Or the way I want it to. Then we have a little bit less visual space than I'd like. Oh, uh, that back. Do, 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 ruler. There's 70 pixels there. Only 41 pixels there. I mean, technically, I could expand this a bit more. Make it feel a little bit more easy. Only 58. Okay, what is my nudge set to? Uh, 
Where does anything go ever? Not what I'm looking for. It moves, they've moved things every fucking version, and I just never recover from the, the version changes. I swear. Why am I not seeing the section for setting the nudge amount? Because usually you can set how many pixels the like, right, left, up, down, whatever keys work for using the nudge function. What am I missing? Uh, no. Theoretically, it should be under units and rulers. It is a unit you're moving. Not grid. Okay, I'm just going to hope for the best. <laughs> I'm going to assume it's one pixel piece for me. Really, I, I'm not being incredibly precise either. I just need to get... You. I just want to get a rough, bit comfortable visual vision. I think it's 68 right there. That's fine. I have my shoulder a bit off. Yeah. I can move this over. By two. Okay. Okay, so we're going to scale the actual game again then, based on that. Which is going to make the game sit at. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. 2200 by 1235. Uh, so we're only going to be down by like. 15%? I don't want to take up too much of our visual space just on an overlay, but I also want the overlay to look good. Wait. Oh. I can... If I just use the... Oh god, where is it? Pathfinder... Pathfinder. Oh. Is it not called the Pathfinder in this version now? Oh god. The Pathfinder fo er, pops up whenever you have complex shapes going on. I was hoping to bring it up as something I could just look down and keep it in a certain spot, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay, whatever. Merge shapes. Okay, merge shapes. You, We are going to turn you into a path. I don't remember these is what it is. Yeah. This is what happens when you spend so much time trying to get minimum wage jobs and spend all your energy on those jobs because you can't find something in your field and then you don't keep up with your skills in the actual thing that you actually care about. And then it's sad. Not pretty stuff. How goes 
not pencil. Uh, pen, 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 pen. pen. pen tool. There you are. Yeah, I'm rusty as shit, unfortunately. I'll just admit it, I'm really rusty. I hate that. But that is just the way things are, because you have to do jobs that actually make you money, and not things you necessarily like. Okay. But there is one wonderful thing that you can have. That GPT. How do you convert merge object into a path and process embedded files? A smart object needs to pen to look at a path based on its outline. Oh, okay. Wow, I was not very familiar with how this works, apparently. Okay, so you rasterize the layer. Use magic wand tool to select it. And you create path from selection. Where the fuck is the paths panel? And why are you popping up? You're supposed to be here. Is this really the, the, the path, this path panel? Is this really the panel that we're using? Okay, why can't we convert? Path and selection. Okay, there we go. Working path. God, it is so much different working with paths in Photoshop than it is in Illustrator. Hopefully, working on this will actually help me brush off the rust. Oh boy, I'm apparently really fucking rusty. Like that. Okay. So, what I was really hoping for, based on this, if I go to the pen tool, can I add rounded edges? Well, not can I add rounded edges. How do I add rounded edges? Uh, okay. I know how to do this when it's a simple. I know how to do this when it's a simple system, but. Oh, I guess I could just fucking cheat. I don't actually have to do this the, the quote-unquote right way. There are easy ways to cheat the system. Okay. Now along that path right there. Okay, 
That path does not pop up in the panel. Huh. Wow, do I ever wish that I still had the same abilities I used to. Instead of letting things deteriorate. Uh. Thank you. I'm trying. It's just frustrating because, like, I used to be so much better at this than I am now. Now I feel like I'm just floundering so much. Okay, so that stroked the path the way that I want, but not the way I wanted to. Yeah. That's a really rough edge. I was looking for. See, okay, here's what I'm trying to do. Let me show you what I'm actually trying to do. I'm trying to do the exact opposite of this. So I want the corner to be rounded like this right here. I'm not as familiar with how to do that without cheating in some way. Unless... Wait, no, I, I need the... I'm gonna be moving the plane. Oh, oh no, no, not like that. Not like that. You actually work the way that I thought you would? No, you're not working like that anymore. Maybe I should do this in the program that I'm way more familiar with. That actually might be a much better plan. Can I turn off the stroke? That's more. All the way back. Because I could run... A, I, I could do this a bit of a hackier way. This is what I expect it to be. I think so. Sure, let's try that. Doesn't matter as long as it is. Great. Important thing is that it is straight. Anything else? This is so much harder to work with than Illustrator. Oh my gosh. Because what I... Well, I can just use Shift-C, and that, wow, that's generative stuff. I can just use Shift-C, and I can change any of the pathing of any object. Well, any pathing object that exists in Illustrator. Maybe my problem is that I've been trying to make this in, in um, Photoshop, and this is actually an Illustrator project. Maybe that is the issue that I'm facing. Wait. Yeah, okay, of course that's the issue I'm facing. This is... Yeah, because Photoshop is for raster graphics. 
Illustrator is for vector graphics. Digital graphics you want to have ve as vectors. So. Okay. Why? I am going to swap us over. Video, video capture. Illustrator. That is not Illustrator. That is a small portion of Illustrator. What are you doing? Capture. Client. Liner. Oh, gosh, that's weird. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I actually need to share it with y'all, or you aren't going to be able to see what's going on. Okay, lock that down there, and swap. Oh, that's so weird. All that's showing up on the stream is a box when I open this, but I can see the entire tool panel, and each tool panel is separate, is a separate window technically. What? Why is it done this way? Why is anything done this way? Okay, well, whatever. You'll. It'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> Everything will be fine. Okay. Well, it's over again. Save up. Okay. Thing. A1. Not there. There we go. Okay. Now let's actually try this again in the program I'm way more familiar with. Give me a random... Right now. Scale, please. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm supposed to be here ultimately. This is testing where I have my head. That's fine. I want my head in the bounds. I think that is that is yet an, the yet again that is the question I'm having is do I want my head in the bounds of the my bar? Yeah, I mean I can. Okay. Now that I'm used to the gas we're cooking with. Join, uh, wait, what? It's not technically... Wait, compound path? I think technically that's right. Oh, they are co they aren't covering each other. That's the problem. You are supposed to cover your friend. 
Okay, I'm gonna make this a lot bit easier on myself. Put you up in the secondary layer. And we'll have the overlay layer. The background layer. Okay, block. Block. Relation layer. I gotta say, I am really liking the music that we're playing today. This is from the uh, Hacknet. The Hacknet. Uh, yeah, it's a bit. The Hacknet uh, soundtrack. I love it. It's a very good game. If you like puzzle games, I do not like puzzle games, and I still like it. Which honest honestly is a fucking miracle. Wait, am I supposed to be uniting it? Is that the issue? Oh, well, it helps if I actually select both things. That really makes things easier. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I, I was getting confused earlier because I was like, where the fuck is the Pathfinder? The Pathfinder's not there because it's fucking Photoshop. There, the Pathfinder's in this box that you can't see currently. Okay, overlay layer. Currently have a black stroke. You are going to have no stroke, and you will be drawing your colors from you. No, no, that's not what you're going to be doing. Oh, nope. not you. We'll do this the actually proper way. Quickly reopen Photoshop. Save the overlay, the bottom overlay that I use for advertising the YouTube channels. We're going to export it as a simple PNG because we're mainly using it for its color profile anyways. There you go. Okay. Oh, you should be in the sim layer since you are not real. Okay. Ink dropper. Or eye dropper, technically. That's nicer. Okay. Now I'm going to do the thing that I was wanting to do earlier, because now I actually can do it. First, why is there a white line? There is a white line there because there was a stroke. That's right there. Good. Yeah, you're good now. Okay. So, we are going to go up, let's say, let's actually properly math this. Where's the ruler? Here. Oh. <sighs> Nah, whatever. I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm familiar. familiar enough with it that I should be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go four pixels up and four across. Ish. 
going to, to delete the old anchor point. I'm going to drag the anchors. Okay. Delete this handle because I don't need it. I just want this handle right here. Try the same thing over here. Delete the first handle. Only the secondary handle. We're going to cover up the ends of both handles with each other. That will make a very sharp, sharp curve. We're going to bring them back a little bit now. Okay, that's closer. How small is that? Oh my god, that's so tiny. I made this way too fucking small. <laughs> okay, now do this exact same thing, but on a much grander scale. <laughs> Give me my rulers, please. Okay, so... We're at 2184. So we are going to go to 2154. There, one, two, three, four. Okay. We're going to drop an anchor here. We are at, let's we move it by 30, so. Horizontally, we are at 2129. So we're going to drop it down to 1199 now. An anchor here. And it's amazing how much easier this is when it's, I'm in a program that I'm actually more comfortable with. Okay. They're going to... Oh! Wait, did I not successfully anchor? You're supposed to be right there. Listen, thank you. You're part of the same thing now, right? Right? Thank you. Okay. I'm also clicking on the guides before. Get rid of one anchor, or get rid of one handle, I should say. Bring that in line. Bring this handle line with this right there. And we are going to bring this handle in line here. All right. So we're going to move to east. Bringing out the anchor handle up there. Take that one. Yep. Fine. Bring out that handle all the way down there. Get rid of this handle. I don't actually need it. We are going to get rid of uh, painting guides here. Okay. Out of here, so what does that look like? Okay, that is that is still very small by comparison. Actually, wait, it's going to be close. That size. That's not as much as I would hope. I guess I mean thirty pixels isn't a huge amount considering that we're actually doing. Um, 1440p, which is 25, 2560 pixels by 1440 pixels. So, maybe what I need to be doing is closer to like 100. Or I just make it sharper. Either. Okay. We're going to move this anchor up. Anchor 1. In your spot. This anchor. This anchor. Thank you. Grr. Grr. Okay. Two, three, four. That's more rounded. Not like crazy or anything. 
No one is going to notice except for me. No one is going to care except for me. But it does make me happy. I think that's the important thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's a little bit more than I actually want. Okay. I don't think I really need a round of that anyway. We do have a decision to make, actually. We could cut off some of the game. If we all that, we can make the overlay a bit differently sized. You should be at. Oh, is that your bottom pixel at 1092? No, your bottom pixel is at 16. Okay, I'm going to move you over. Over 10. Oh, say 20. Okay. So with that, simulate it properly here. I'd mean that portion would be cut off. In exchange. For this portion worth of space being bigger, you know, I think I would prefer to remain in its usual spot. Actually, I might move around. I'm considering adding a border um, along the top as well, so that we can smush this downwards a little bit. That will, that will resize this. Control shift, main aspect ratio. Wait, what am I doing? I can just change the height here. Okay, I'm select the pixels that are actually rem relatively important for this. I'm going to move them all down together. When you do that, it means that it maintains the exact same angle as before. Nice. Now I will move this down to compensate. Giving us all right. There. Okay, and that leaves us an edge to work. Okay. Now to add to this, because this wonderful snap to stuff with Illustrator, we can just do this. I made an anchor point at the very corner. Another anchor point here. Drag this one over here. A bit messy. Make another anchor point, doesn't matter where. Drag it over to this side too. And now you have a box. Congratulations. You're boxing now. Boxing very hard. Okay. So you continue to be at 2181. That means that I'm going to cut off your pixel. Putting you at 2150. Huh? Yep. 
50. 21. 51. Thank you. Okay. We're going to make another one. We're currently at... 45. So you're going to be down at 75. You're going to make two points on the path here. The intersect. Okay, and if I do this, go right across. Do this, it should go right. Why are you not responding to me? Telling you, delete. Thank you. I hate, I hate how there's always these things because the nudge isn't exactly one. The sizes aren't exactly two pixel perfect measure, which means that there'll always be like little lines and stuff like that. I hate that. And it's probably an error in how I've calibrated things. I don't know how to fix it and I've never known how to fix it. I've never been able to fix it. Four and four. Okay. Now we have rounded step on both sides. I kind of want to put an overlay on the left here, like a little line, but I'm Kind of avoiding it too. And the reason why I'm avoiding that is because I want this side to stay as big as it possibly can be. Because this is where I'm going to be putting chat. Surprise chat, I'm going to be putting, I'm going to be placing you now. Be ready, be ready for placement. Okay. So we are going to make box. We make box now. <laughs> yes, placement. Placement time. Okay, we are going to go over that we are at, what are we at? Okay. First of all, you can go We are going to add, uh, well, we're at 84. Do a nice fine number, put us at 94. Then I want a line that is flush with the top. Do number by 10. Go over to the side now. 10 is not going to be anywhere near enough. That's going to be a joke by comparison. How thick is this? That's 45. Yeah, that's 45. Okay. I move that over by 10. I'm going to move this over by another 35, actually. Now, if I do it, if I do too much, we're going to end up with this. So I'm going to be taking it on both sides. Okay, so, yeah, because if I moved it over, I mean, just moving it over by 10, this is all the way over here. I'm going to go for 20. I mean, actually, that's not, that's actually a perfect still. Okay, I'm going to put it at 9, then. So let's move it over by 25. Now we are going to put another guide here. Edge. This one is 
at 20, 26, yeah, 2560. I'm moving it over by 25, so 2540, 2535. Oh, I can just use negative 25. We are going to make chat box now. The chat box will be a very similar color to what we had before, except, except how do I open the color palette? There we go. Uh, oh, right, because this is going to be working in. This UI. Okay, no, I want the color, actual proper color picker UI, please, and thank you. Okay, so this is our, this UI is already at 55, 54% black. So I'm going to be dropping down to 64. Or, 64, to 44, I think. Is that enough? 44, 39. Let's be dropping it by 15 points. That's a fair shift, I think. And that is going to go here. And if we make all the guides go away for a second, do. Yeah, guide layer. All the guides to a guide layer for a second. Move the guide layer. Oh, can I not mass boot things or am I doing this? I'm doing okay. Move guides to guide layer. Remove guides. Okay. So this is where the chat box would be. And I'm going to set the corners. Pencils. There you go. You're almost there. No, my corner's at 30, I think, actually. Yeah, my corner's at 30. So that right here would be the chat box. Then I need my own, like, little bubble box, place where I exist, too. And I can expand this downwards. And if I had, like, an actual notable chat at this point, like an actual following, then I would make this much bigger. This already is too big for what I am for what I am currently experiencing with my two viewers. But <laughs> I want my overlay to be scalable and this will make it scalable, so whatever. I do I ideally want to Nope, right there. I want to cut this because cuts going to do is I'm going to rescale the size on this. One. You're going down to at least half the size. Let's say, let's say 300. That's half. Okay, yeah, that's exactly on top of the other one. You're going to drop down Hang on the same dish. You're going to drop down to 600. I'm going to add roughly the same visual spacing between the top of my ear and there. Okay, so now we have two boxes. This one will be chat's box here. Chat. This one uh, will be the agenda up here. So the agenda is just going to be this is what I'm this is this is the set of things that I am going to be working on in this stream. What I am working on right now is I'm working on the overlay. And after this, we are going to go into path. But for now, this is what we're working on. OK. Then, how am I going to do with this, this empty space in the bottom? Because 
I don't think it's any secret that there's a lot of fucking space down here. And that space needs to be used for something. I think that the best thing to use that space for probably is like my object my stream objective. What I'm intending to do with this stream, like what I'm naming it, why I'm naming it that, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm probably going to take a, an objective down in the there. Okay. I'm gonna relock the background there so it's messed with. I'm gonna lock up all that stuff because we're not using it right now, and we are now going to build something to cover. Let's just just for just for giggles and shits. We're gonna expand this. Okay, no, that's not close. I need to actually see what's going on. Okay, so we're currently sitting at 1274 for the edge here. We're going to move it down, I think, well, I guess 30. So we're going to be going to 1304. So this should be right there. It also means that this thing is supposed to be at 32, so this should be over there. Okay, so that is the very corner right there. I think. Okay. So we're going to make like a wide, wide box here and write stuff in. We are going to space it at this bottom here. It's at 1440 here, so we are going to be going into 1410. Grab the anchor point, drag down, go to the other side. Grab the anchor point, drag down. Okay, I'm keeping 40 pixels. Wait, 40? Keeping, no, I'm keeping 30-ish pixels. The right thing. That's eh, close to 40. Okay, so in that case, on this side, it has to be roughly the same. For the sake of placement. Okay, so we are currently sitting at... ...2187. So we are going to be moving this in to... 2147. At these. Right there. Did I move the anchors or did I move the box? Move the anchors. Good. Okay, so that's encapsulated now. Now, here's the trickiest part. We. Drop down to the small size here. I'm going to make a fairly wild guess, and I'm going to hope it works. At 2.30, we are going to make a split right here. And then again at 2.60, we're going to make a split. Right. Oh, shit, that wasn't on the actual proper lines. It needs to be... It needs to not think it's I'm putting it in a different layer because I'm clicking on the wrong thing. It needs to actually be in the right thing. Okay. Actually, wait, the spacing is going to be 270. So I'm making two separate boxes, basically, right now because I want to have a little box where I can put all my socials and stuff in. I make this wrong. Okay, 
guides you all into And no, no, you're working right. Okay. So now we need the scissors. Which are in a place that I absolutely totally remember. Thank you. We're going to cut it right there, and we're going to cut it right here. That there. Or that. We're going to take these two together, and we're going to unite them so that it's not an open shape it's actually good here actually do we even need to click on the right thing no we don't they, they just automatically do that okay you're okay. going to grab 30 for the corners and 30 corners this is starting to actually look like a real professional overlay now That is way too small for my socials. I want to have enough room to put in uh, my Twitch channel and my two YouTube channels. Okay, so we're going to need to move this roughly... Oh, wait. Okay, hold on a second. I want to try something. I don't know if this will work the way that I think it will. But I want... I'm really curious... If I can do it like this. Okay, so I've selected the, the corner pixels on both sides. I'm going to drag... Oh, I can just move them like that. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's nice. Is that enough space? No. I might have a little bit extra space. Sure, let's say that's right. Now, within this box, I'm going to place text. And when we do this... We are not going to put it on the line like this, because then it puts it to the very, very edges. It's a problem, in many cases. Instead, we are going to make a separate chat box outside of it that is roughly around its bearings. Right, wrong thing. Because I don't want it to be text wrapping exactly the curves. Okay, Black Cat Studio. Hey, what? Oh, don't quit. Oh, I went... <laughs> I, hit, I was trying to go to hit control S and I hit control W. So it's like, do you want to close the window? No, I don't. No, actually, I'm quite fine. Okay, so you need to change to something different. I use open sans for everything these days. Uh, do I, I think I use semi bold generally. Also, you are it's tiny as fuck. Okay, yeah, you're 12 points. I'm going to need like 24 points. East. That's almost the same size as this. That's probably closer to 28 points. Can I get away with 28? No, I can't. Not with this size box. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. And we are going to use the center, vertical center alignment. The thing that everyone who uses, everyone who designed it is stuff in HTML back in the day was like, oh my god, vertical alignment, it's not real. It was like there was hacks for it, but like it was always such a fucking pain in the ass to make two vertical alignments. Not that relates to this in any way, but you know. 
I used to do HTML a lot more back when I was in high school. Which... Oh god, how long ago was that? Twelve years? Thirteen years? Eleven years? Something like It's been a decade since I've been in high school. So. HTML whatever. It was before five. I mean, because five revolutionized everything, so... I don't know which version of HTML it was. Anyways. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we are going to move this stuff a wee bit. Because... We need this icon. Now, where did I put the icon that I used? Did I, in fact, even save the icon that I used to make this? So, and yeah, I don't think I did. It was actually the. <laughs> The YouTube logo icon that I'm using is actually was on uh it was actually over on VectEasy, but it was listed as like play button icon. Like it was very obviously trying to pretend it's not the YouTube icon when it's very obviously the YouTube icon. Like, yeah, no, this is this is our play button icon. It's red because we like the color red for some reason. And it's totally not because of there's a site. Oh, here it is. Oh god. Okay. You are slightly too big. This might be a shock, but you are too big. You're going to go somewhere else now. Wow, you are still dramatically too big. Uh, nope. You want? I want you to roughly reflect the size uh, of my text. That means you're going to be slightly bigger. Nope, don't trace. I mean, I can, but. I don't think it'll help me very much. Okay, so we need... Uh, two YouTube icons. And we also need a Twitch icon, too. Actually, it might be better to split it so that Black Hat Studio is at the top and Black Hat... Uh, streams at the bottom, and then Black Hat Studio, the Twitch channels in the middle. There we go. Okay, so now what I need is a Twitch icon. Which technically I don't have the rights to use, I don't believe. But I am going to be using the Twitch icon on the Twitch site, so... Uh... Yeah, I, you're... Yeah. I think they kind of just, like, I think it's one of those things where it's technically illegal to, like, use the YouTube icon like I am and the Twitch icon like I'm about to. But they're just gonna look the other way anyways. Because I'm advertising my part on their product, and it is beneficial for them to just not enforce the what they have. Which icon transparent background? Okay, and I want. 
decently sized. How big are you? Uh, you are a size that will eventually download. Okay, cool. Man, this stream is going to fucking destroy my average viewership. Because we're not doing path, we're doing this crazy other weird thing called art. <laughs> it's like, oh no. Oh no, my favorite cat girl streamer is now... Now become an artist. Ugh. Ugh. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Promise everything will be fine. Okay. I ideally want to have white in the background. No. On top. I just magic wand tool. Where where are you? We have a magic wand tool in this program, right? I'm not silly. I think I'm silly. Okay, you, I'm gonna image trace you. Uh, expand. Okay, well that partially works. Yeah, that'll work just fine. That one, that one, and that one. So I drop her that. Then delete the linked file. There we go. You know what? Actually, now that I think about it, I should probably be image tracing these. Uh, I need the proper image trace, though, and not this thing. Color, limited palette. I'm aware. Oh. <laughs> wow, my screen went entire like my the entirety of of Illustrator went black there. Well, fuck. <laughs> Do you really need 2700 anchors for that, really? Okay, you can do a little bit better than that. Anchors, 213. You do not need 213 fucking anchors. You will be okay with less. My gosh. Do not... Don't anchor me, bro. You need one, two, uh... You need 12 anchors. 11 anchors. Not 126. Thank you. That's a little bit more reasonable now. There we go. Anyways, the reason why I'm bothering to trace it like this, despite the fact that it's really annoying to do so, is the fact that it will technically scale better now. Oh my god, what did you do to yourself? You don't need to be doing this to yourself. Stop torturing... No, no. Stop torturing yourself, please. This is not how this is supposed to work. Come on, Illustrator. You can do better than this. Okay, well, if you can't do better than this, I'll do it better for you. I guess that is the limits of how effectively I can manage to use the default image trace function. Okay, good. 
problems. Not. Nope, not that. Okay, and that should be the play button. Or the play button, the play symbol. Okay, that. No. No. Do what I want, not what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> Uh, you know, one of the things that I really like to do, and I know, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who does it, so I might be one of the few people who actually does it, like, very consciously, is I let myself shit talk, like, Illustrator or whatever program I'm using, because I know that... It'll help me relieve stress when I'm frustrated about something that it's doing. Good. Thank you. Okay. You... Get minimized. I don't actually need you. Guide, you can go back to the guide layer. I just said I have lots of guides everywhere. They're just all hidden right now. Okay, do I want to encapsulate this perfectly or do I want to just leave it kind of as? Eh, it's fine. Okay, so I want specifically. I'm gonna grab this, 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 and this. I'm going to create a layer for them. Right, because it's the same as grouping in path. This isn't the same as grouping. I read. I read path. This isn't the same as grouping things together in Photoshop. The layers function a bit differently. Okay, is this the socials one? No. Which one is this? Over here. Oh, that's the whole thing. Okay. And over. You are going to be description bar. Okay. Um, this is the socials bar. The socials bar is right over here. And I am going to lock it now so that it's not going to get bothered. Yeah, I'm going to lock that. I'm going to lock the description bar. Uh, I need to change the simulation bar now, because I don't need that anymore. This is how roughly it's going to look. Okay, this is looking great, actually. So, now that this is all done... We are going to turn off simulation layer. And the background layer, there. So this is the full overlay itself right here that we've just designed. To be honest, I'm pretty happy. That's looking really nice. Okay, so we are going to test version one now. Support for screens. Should, I technically be, should it be a PNG technically or an SVG? 
Uh, I think I should... I think PNG is fine. I mean, we're about to find out how big it's going to be as a PNG. Branding. Yeah. Branding folder. Now we're going to do the really exciting part. Or the part that at least I find very exciting. Okay, streaming full overlay. Version 1. that cool. okay yep now we're gonna do the actually really really exciting thing which is gonna require an entire revamp of my system probably but I'm gonna do it the quick and dirty way for now Graphic, full overlay, create new, ah, oh, this music's such a jam, I love it. Okay, now it's time for things to get a bit messy. Okay, I will have to, things will have to get a bit messy before they get. Okay, block. That's going to be above all video. Okay. Avatar. I'm gonna get shifted. There. Okay. Cool. Now let me show you approximately what it's looking like at the moment. Okay. There's a bunch of things not right with this look right now. But now hold on. <laughs> Okay, so the okay the socials overlay is gone now. Chat bar graphic is going to be gone now. Which chat actual function now going to get moved? You going to be right there. Oh, you're going to be tiny for. A How can I make you the right size? Okay, currently you are not the right size. Three twenty by yeah, let's say three twenty. Nope, not still not right. Okay. That's a bit better. God, my OBS, my OBS scenes are just an absolute fucking disaster right now. They just look terrible and everything is in a weird place and nothing makes sense. I'm going to have to fix that when we're not on I'm not on stream. I'm gonna make it actually not awful like that, because I need to reorganize to fit in with a lot of the things that I'm doing now. Place. Because my old system is subpar for the way that I now run my streams. 
because I had like an older organization system that fit me well at the time, but it doesn't anymore. So I used to have different stream scenes based on the game I was playing, and now I'm going to split it so that all my games are in one stream scene. I'm going to put browsers and non-game programs in separate places, probably. At least that's the idea. Okay, Illustrator, you are going to be the first one to test the new box on. Try to not. Uh oh. Oh, that is a problem I didn't consider. Okay, so something I did not actually plan for and don't really know how to deal with is the fact that some of my programs are not. Like, they're, when they're in 1080p, they're not 1080p. Not, not like, real 1080p. They're actually, like... 1020p, technically. They're, like, ever so slightly smaller than they're supposed to be. Okay, that should be a good... That, that should be a kind of a quick and dirty. Or that. Okay, yep. No, that's looking better. How's that? Nope, still too... Oh my gosh, there's so... There's very little between too big and too small right now. Frustrating. But, uh... Okay, you can see my problem on stream right now that I'm facing. That is the fact that there's just a fucking black bar there. Because... Because the way that this is set up, because this is not a full screen application, I, yeah, <laughs> I have a problem. Actually, wait, I can change modes. Can I do full screen? The problem is, like, I can swap screen modes, and it'll swap me to, like, presentation mode, which is not what I'm looking for. Okay. Um. Hey, computer, you want to, like, show what I'm doing? What is going on? Oh my god. Okay. The way that this... The way that they've designed Illustrator to work... It's bizarre with with actually recording it. Okay, wow, that is so weird. Okay, cool. We have a stream we have a stream overlay. <laughs> Wait, fuck, I put the damn it, I put the chat in the wrong spot. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, now are you content? Okay. No, you're not content because you're the wrong size now. Seven hundred and eighty height. No. 
that it really matters because I'm not going to have an entire chat full anyways, but still. I want that to at least be somewhat close to right. Okay. Lock. Lock. Transition. Okay. Now when people type in chat, we actually should, it should actually be a thing now. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, you're at the bottom. Why are you at the bottom? Oh, it scrolls up. Oh, thank you, Ron. You have, you have a once in a lifetime opportunity right now for anyone who's watching. For the next 30 seconds, you can spam as much as you would like. I mean, okay, in in reason of what Nightbot will allow you to do, because it will block you if you spam too much. But, like, you're allowed to spam a little bit for the next, like, 20 or 30 seconds. If you want. Because that will actually allow me to... You make sort of chat scrolls like a news broadcast station. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. I have no idea how to do that. Oh, 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 okay. I know what I need to do. I know what I need to do. I'm not going to do it now because this is basically the end of uh, the art for tonight. But uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to add a little donation box. Add donation box. To overlay. That little donation box that just shows like how to how to donate to me as well. And in the top right hand corner, I'm going to also add my <laughs> it is best chat. In the top right hand corner, I'm also gonna add my logo too. But for now, this is this is the end of our content here. We are going to go to chatting for a second. Now that we've done we've made version one. And We are going to see how well this goes, because I am now going to add Path of Exile and its game capture to the overlay. Okay, for a second I was about to say, no, why are you not the right size? No, it's the right size. I had in the wrong spot. Oh, okay. I have this wrong. Is that right now? I think it's right. Okay, full overlay. Drag you all the fucking way down there. Oh, the overlay. You're not supposed to be above it. And... Whoa! This is what it will look like from now on. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> I'm so excited! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! The new overlay looks so good! I was like... I didn't even think I'd be able to make something that I'm this happy with. But I'm really happy with this. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy with this. I don't know why I'm so happy. No, I know why I'm so happy with this, because it actually looks fucking good. And 
I am learning that despite the fact that I use Photoshop more than Illustrator, I think I actually am more skilled in Illustrator based on how much stuff I've done in it, like the variety of things, versus Photoshop, which I use a lot, but I do the exact same stuff every single time in it. So yeah. Okay, so, now that we have all this, this shit set up, we are going to play Path. First, though, it's been two hours, and it is time for a pee break, and a chance to stretch. It's only going to be a few minutes, just because, you know, I don't really want to spend too long in intermission, but uh, we'll just have a few minute intermission, and then we will be back with actual Path of Exa, and I have some plans and some things to tell you all, too, so... Don't run away, because we have some exciting things. Plus, I got a cool drop earlier I really want to show you. Okay, hear me. Tell it again. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, popping up. So, I made another change while we were on break. Uh, from now on, we, we had, okay, originally, we had chat disappear after a certain amount of time because of how small the chat box is. But, from now on, chat will not be disappearing. It will keep filling up till the chat hits the top, and then it will go off screen. I think that fits this style a lot better now. If it was the style we had before, that made sense. But I think this one needs something different. King of things. Different. That. Oh, you are not going to fit comfortably in this box at all, are you? That's not going to work. Oh, that is not comfortably fitting in that box whatsoever. <laughs> so, we've worked on quite a few different things as of the past stream. As you can see in the top right, we've beaten Abomination, Citadel, and Fortress now, leaving just Sanctuary and Ziggurat left as our Tier 17s to beat. But before we work on that, I also want to show you something else. Which hires me to Open another notepad document. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay. So, the other day, we were gambling tattoos. Specifically, Remico tattoos. We invested a bunch of money into them, and we actually got a decent return, surprisingly. We learned that when you gamble a tattoo, the type of tattoo that you have, let's say Katava, uh, as just an example, this is a Katava shaman, so Katava is the clan. 
If you were to take three of these tattoos and roll them, put them in the vendor, you will either get a red tattoo out of it, or you'll get a Katava tattoo out of it. Because sometimes, uh, the, sometimes the clans span multiple colors. So, these strength ones are Katava ones, and yeah, you can either roll, you either get a red one, or you'll get a Katava one. Based on that, we were rolling Ramako tattoos, specifically Ramako Archer, Sniper, and Scout. They are about 1C apiece, uh, or they were when we found them. They're not always that. And we were pumping those into the vendor in the hopes that we would get either the Fleetfoot or the Shaman tattoos. Ramako Shaman or Ramako Fleetfoot. Ramako Fleetfoot is about 5C apiece, and Ramako Shaman is about 40C apiece. Or 3 to a Divine. So, if... Uh, let's, let's math here. If you put... Th if you get 39... If 39 tattoos equal 1 Shaman, then you are breaking even, roughly. So you can get quite a few tries out of it, and that would be that would be thirteen tries to get a shaman out of that. So it is it is actually decent as like a t as a gambling method. Now, why am I bringing up that we're that all of this again? Because I did something maybe ill advised. You look at the top right hand corner our little tattoo section, I spent 827 chaos on more tattoos. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this is... <laughs> there's nearly a thousand tattoos here. And we are going to throw them all into the vendor. And we are going to see what they turn into. Which is exciting. Because I put in... I mean, I put in... 827C, which is... 7 Divine right now? Divine Orbs are really shitty. They're like 114 right now. Yeah, they keep dropping too. I don't know why they're dropping so... The Divine Orbs are just dying at the moment. So, yeah, pretty good. So we are going to see what we can get out of this. To break even, assuming we get no Fleetfoots, only get Shamans. We need to get, what is it, 20, 20 and a half, I think? And 800 divided by 40 is 20, yeah, so 27, yeah, so we need about... I guess to compensate for the time as well, let's say 840 we need back to break even. So, we need to get 21 Shaman Tattoos out of 827 Tattoos. When we first pump them into the vendor, we will get back... 200, we will have 275 tries to get 21 tattoos. So, roughly, if we get one tattoo, one shaman every 13 tries, which is 39 tattoo, every 39 tattoos that we put in, we will break even, roughly. So, let's start pumping all of these tattoos into... Okay. You can only do so much at a time, so I have to be kind of careful. There, okay. Sniper, Archer, Scout. Sniper, Scout, Archer, Eightfoot, Shaman. Okay, we've already got five of the shamans that we need. So we're a quarter of the way to breaking even already. 
Plus, we got some fleet foots, which I won't. Okay, so we current we have nine shamans now, and six fleet foot. Let's take another set. Actually, I need that. I do. I bulk. Then no, I can't. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Not accidentally destroy something we want. Commons. Those are our shamans right there. Our fleet foots. Okay, so all of those are tier. So we are currently sitting at 15 shamans, so most the way to where we want. We're only like halfway through as well, so it's pretty, been pretty good. <laughs> For what we want. Nope, too many. There we go. Okay, as long as those have stacks, they won't blend in with the rest of the stuff. Oh, 20, right there. Plus the fleet foots, we have now earned back all of our investment. And we still have... 50, 100, 150... 200, uh, 250. We have, we have well over 200 more tattoos to gamble, too. Who knew this was going to be this effective? Well, I mean, I guess technically I, I did, because I wanted to do this, because I figured it would be effective, but I mean, this is very effective. We have... We've already made a notable profit on what we've done. Took a while to collect all these two. We'll total up how much money we've actually made after all this stuff is done. Now that I know that we that we've at least broken even. Okay. Okay, so here is our total. We need twenty one. We needed twenty one uh, Ramakos shamans to to successfully uh, return our investment, roughly, and we ended up with thirty four shamans plus another thirty seven Fleetfoots. Fleetfoots continued to be about five C a piece, so we are going to calculate the thirty seven of them at five C a piece. Making the return on Fleetfoot specifically 185. Okay, now we are going to calculate the comments. 
double check their price again because they do shift in prices. Okay, so it looks like it's about 39, maybe 30. Just to be really safe, I'll calculate it at 39 C a piece. 39 times 34 of them brings us in at 1326 chaos plus the 185 brings us in at 1511 chaos return minus our initial investment of 827 chaos giving us a net profit of 6 Hundred and eighty-four chaos. As you can see in the top right, because I'm doing the math up there too. So we just made almost double the money that I put in by doing this. Because if you consider it, there's five Ramico tattoos. You are currently putting in one tattoo that it cannot return as itself. So it only has four outputs. One of those outputs is extremely valuable. The other is decently valuable, and the other two are duds. So you have a 50% chance of getting something that is more valuable than what you're currently doing. And you have a 25% chance of getting something that is 40 times, or no, not 40 times, because technically they're three per slow. It would be 13.3 times more expensive than what you put in. So it actually is an extremely fucking good deal. I list these now. Okay, so... People still listing them for pretty expensive. Yeah, people are listening, listing two divine for five of them. I could do one to three. Honestly, like that would be thirty-seven. Yeah. Two to five would be nice. I mean, let's see. That might not work. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Okay. Okay, here's now what I'm going to do. Four of these. Put off. I'm going to list it at four. Now, I have two different prices going on. We'll see what people do with it. And we will do the fleet foots now too. They are currently being listed as ten to a divine, which is like eleven C a piece. That's a lot. Someone's listing them for twenty to a divine, which is about 6C a piece, which is still a little bit more expensive on average. I'm going to try... One Divine to 15 of them. And I'm going to list them as 5C a piece. Wait, what? If they're five, if they're tw fifteen to well, actually, yeah, if they're fifteen to a divine, that would be me charging seven point six chaos apiece. So let me actually sell them for six a piece right now and see what I get as a return. Because remember. It doesn't matter how much potential profit you have if you do not sell the thing. 
You have to continue to actually sell the thing. <laughs> or you or you do not get anything back. Okay. So that is the end of our gambling match. We have earned a large amount of money. And certainly enough that uh we'll we'll get somewhere. I got another Veiled Orb today from doing Katarina. So I am doing pretty good on money. I have roughly enough money to run... I think I have about enough money to get to... Like, like from 98 to 99 and maybe like a 30% of the way into 99 with this. With just like buying XP runs. So I'm trying to put a bit more money together, which is, I mean... That's what I'm doing with all this money making, is I'm trying to make enough money that I can get the last two levels. Because my last two levels are going to pump my health and pump my stats and just generally will give me two more passive points to use. So they will, you know, a lot. Also, I have made a few little changes to this build. Just... Eight. That's not right. Again. Okay, now we have the right thing up in the top right of what we have successfully beaten so. So, we've had a few changes to the build. The uh, first and most interesting change that I think was actually present last stream was that we put Hydros... We we've now have Hydrosphere instead of Frost Shield and Phase Run. Phase Run was an inconsistent movement speed buff, and Frost Shield mainly scales off of having Energy Shield, and we don't have Energy Shield for it to use. So it kind of made it impotent, at best. So, we dropped the cast when stunned, and we now have cast when di damage taken level 1, with 20% quality, to reduce the amount that you actually need to trigger it. We have Hydrosphere here, which has the ability to drench things, so it applies cold and lightning exposure. Doesn't really matter to us, doesn't really affect us specifically, but that's fine. However, it does have the ability to spread Freeze, Shock, Brittle, and Sap that I inflict on it, because you can inflict damage onto the Hydrosphere itself, and it will transfer those ailments to other things that it hits. The other thing, though, is I put Chance to Poison support on it, so it now poisons. It hits rough... it lasts for... It lasts for 8 seconds... And it pulses once every 0.4 seconds. So it hits quite a few different times. And has a 40% chance each hit to poison anything that's in its rate. Now, why does that matter? I'm not a poison build. I don't, don't stack chaos. But the reason why that matters is that I have Yoke of Suffering. Enemies take 9% increased damage for each type of ailment that you have inflicted on them. That's not just elemental ailments. It also includes bleed and poison. And potentially even Impale. So I've been trying to figure out, well, where can I add one of those things to the build? Bleed can only be applied through attacks, which I didn't know. But after a lot of research, yeah, it can only be applied through attacks, which is weird. Uh, and Impale's not going to work because that requires Spell Impale, which I don't even want to deal with that. Uh, but Poison is fairly easy to apply. So, we will be having poison on a lot of things now, which is great. And that means that we will have just an extra, like, 400, 500,000 damage on Yoke of Suffering. It's actually, like, a pretty big damage boost having another ailment. I would love to add yet another, but I don't really have the ability yet. 
Also, I badly needed to change out my Yoke of Suffering, because it's only a 9% damage instead of 10% damage, which is maximum. And I can definitely afford a better Yoke of Suffering. Also, I managed to get a new helmet! Yay! Uh, it's currently missing a modifier. I just haven't decided what to do with it. So, it gives me spell suppression. It gives me about the same amount of evasion rating as my last one. It gives me a huge chunk of life. And it also gives me mind throwing speed. Which is an extremely high damage stat for me. That adds a lot of damage to my build. Uh, this was what we were doing before down here. So a lot of it was resistances, which we don't need, as you can see. We're at 110 as our lowest, so we're perfectly fine without the resistance. And our max life went up by almost 50. Really good. Uh, we lost the mana reservation efficiency, but that's fine. It's not that important. And we lost Atlas damage, or bosses to, or damage to Atlas bosses, which doesn't matter because it's chaos damage. And it got replaced with Critical Strike Chance and Fire fire Pen, which is awesome. I don't know what to do about adding another modifier to this. I... Theoretically, there are ways that I could... Uh... I don't know. I don't know what to do with it, because I could just Exalted Orbit, but I don't know if there's a better thing I could do with it, and the options for suffixes, because it is a suffix, for an Exalted Orb Slam are not very good, especially with an item level 78. So, I'm kind of just leaving it as is, and if I think of something that's, like, crazy good to put on it, I'll put on it. So, I have a bunch more survivability and damage right there that I didn't have last, last stream, which is a big, big deal. Also, put everything back where it was. So, I've been rolling around with uh, some of my flasks. I've been rolling around some of my flasks. Kind of weird that way. Uh, most of them are all 70% increased effect now. I have, I also grabbed, uh, last stream I was using this, the Jade Flask of Order, which regen and lots of evasion rating, which keeps me at 86% chance to evade. If I swap in the Granite Flask, which also has regen on it, that gives me, that drops me it from 86 to 81% chance to evade, but also a 32% damage reduction, physical damage reduction, which I didn't think was very important until I played against Deldre, who was pain in the ass to deal with. And she does a lot of physical damage, so hopefully that will help. I don't know for sure if it's physical damage from hits only. Um, well, no. I know it's physical damage from hits only. I don't know if that includes spells or just, or just attacks. So that is a question. But depending on whether I need to defend against physical damage or not, I can swap between my Granite Flask, and my Jade Flask. So those are my options there. And then I'm keeping my Sulfur Flask for damage, which also, it also has evasion rating on it. I'm keeping my Quartz Flask because I need the element... I now rely on these elemental resistance. As well as uh, the Spell Suppression and the Phasing are just too good to not have. And the Quicksilver, I thought, was kind of superfluous. But now that I've spent time with it, honestly, I need the... 75% increased movement speed. And plus the curse the the curse immunity is really good. I think that's just about everything. So our plans are to go after the tier 17 bosses. And we have a lot of maps to do that with. So we have four more sanctuaries to try and three more ziggurats to try to get to it. Sanctuary being the Lycia Herald of the Scourge and Ziggurat being Uber Katarina mixed in with Del. 
not doubt boss. Um, abyss bosses. Ulamon and his Akuta. But first, I want to show you something, because I got a fun drop earlier. I got Nico's... I'll just show you on the map. I got Nico's Memory of Demonic Onslaught. Which, allow, which basically you can apply to one of your maps, and it has, or it has, four, it connects four separate maps in that area to it, and they get, it gives them a few different modifiers. One, everything is breached, the area is breached, so everything is a breach. Uh, there's a bunch of clasped hands around, 25% chance to contain a boss, bosses have a high chance to drop a breach stone, increase attack and health of. Breach monsters. Uh, because this is special, the memories do not use your Atlas passive tree, so I'm not going to bother with that. And I also can't add uh, any scarabs in here. It doesn't accept things. What you can do is you can add qual quality, which I've done, and you can roll it to rare, which I've done. And you can also add... Delirium orbs. So I'm going to add... I'm going to add just a cartographer's delirium orb, just to see how it goes. Okay, so we're going to run this as is. Nico's Memory of Demonic Onslaught. And there will be three other maps after this, each with increasing difficulty. So now this is a... Oh, right, I need to actually turn on my, my automation. Now this is a breached delirious area. Here, 16. Pretty fun modifiers, looks like. We Really, we have chilled ground, which is a pain, and we have a chance for it to avoid a poison, which is kind of annoying, but, like, really, there's nothing here that's actually, the, like, overtly dangerous to us. Oh. Let's see. Let's see what we get here. Let's see what we can make out of this map. Hoping we'll see a breach lord. Just just because it's fun. I mean it'll get out of a breach stone, which is nice, but I mean it's fun just having uh that. Oh a Veritanium map, okay. I guess I don't need to clear every Every delirious thing I see, but I mean, it's ideal. Oh, I don't have to click on the uh, the hand the uh, last hands anymore. I've totally forgot. I can just uh, thank you. I can just walk over them now. I was clicking on them because I'm I've been playing this game for a long time, and it's hard to old habits are hard to remove. And goodbye. Oh, right. It powers up the other one. The breached area kind of works like Delirium in itself. The fact that it just adds extra breached monsters everywhere. As far as I can tell. Maybe it just replaces all the monsters with things. I don't know. Actually, it doesn't feel like there's extra density. Oh. Kosis? Hi, Kosis. 
Okay, you need to... I'm going to decoy you. Don't really want... And remember, use my decoy totem. Still not in the habit. And that's silly, because decoy totem is actually really fucking good. Never really gave it enough credit, but like, a level 2120 decoy totem is amazing. Irregardless your build. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. Not irregardless your build. If you're a totem build, you don't want to use it. But, because you already need your totem limit for other things, but besides that... Yeah. Man, this this frozen ground is so annoying. Because I I'm immune to freeze, but I'm not immune to chill. Not seeing any breeze. Kind of sad. Oh, Lair of the Hydro. Wow. We're, we're getting lucky in other senses, though. <laughs> like, why... Why are we getting all these cool maps? Like, I don't think we have, there's any bonuses to them. As far as I know. Think about map bonuses here? Oh! We're getting bonus map items from the Delirium. Right, okay. Yes, there is there is a bonus to maps. <laughs> oh, I'm silly. Okay, that's a bit much. That much going on in that one spot. I still reflectively hit my button for my Quicksilver, despite the fact that I can't use my Quicksilver anymore. Since now it's locked by Mageblood. Okay. We... Are going to change... Up a few things. Okay, memory of Demi demonic onslaught. Now this one it has increased explicit modifier magnitudes. Thank you, Pyro. We spent two hours designing it on stream. We only just got into path a little bit ago. Okay. X fruit. That's fine. Yeah, that should be fine. Cool. Delirious. Okay. Activate. Now the new map should be up. And we'll have 20 with a much higher chance. 20 class hands with a much higher chance of a boss. Okay, element of weakness, rare monsters. Yep, no, it's all fine. Okay. Oh, we got uh, currency shards and currency. Nice. Oh, hello. Still in toll. I haven't seen you since earlier today when I did an old toll breachstone and killed you. Thank you. This doesn't feel very scary for some reason. Oh, I think I'm now used to tier 17s, so everything below tier 17 is like, eh. It's like when... You've been in red maps a long time, and you go back to a tier 10, and it's like, oh. I guess I'm not going to die in this map for any reason. I guess I don't need my brain on.
As long as I just avoid doing, like, incredibly stupid things, I'm fine. Like, standing in that. That would, would have been stupid. This is the second of four maps. We're we'll seeing third map soon. I don't think this one will take very long. Yep, this definitely will not take very long. <laughs> All I just need to do is, like, sidestep every little once in a while because of the uh, delirium horrors that chase you. They're slower and less impressive than the volatile cores I've been dealing with in the tier 17, so they kind of just feel sad. Not sad, but, like, they feel beginner now. I used to treat them with the same seriousness that I treat the Volatile Cores in the 17s. Because there's like a re I mean, for those who haven't actually tried them, th there's a real difference between the 16s and the 17s. They're not, they're not the same thing at all. It's not one tier indifference. It's just, it's technically one tier indifference, but it's not, that's not what it feels like. It feels more like four or five tiers in difference. Because of the all the extra modifiers that they add. I'd say it's really sad to have to use the memories though when it means that blocking the lantern. Because you can't use the lantern with anything like Kirok related, and this is basically a Kirok mission, essentially. Ah, I couldn't kill it before it phased. <laughs> I do remember Demonic Onslaught being one of the less scary versions of the memories when I we originally checked them out. I did I did a video on all the memories back in My brain keeps wanting to say Harvest League, but that definitely is not true. It's not Harvest League. It was way, way after that. The trial of the ancestors? Maybe. Maybe it was Crucible. That that actually sounds right. It probably was Crucible. Crucible was a really fun league. I liked it. I gotta say, this isn't very rewarding by comparison to the content I'm used to. I mean, my inventory right now is the product of almost two entire maps.
Did I miss the boss or no? We still haven't gotten to me. Okay, so not almost two maps, a map and a half. More accurate. The thing is, we are entering yet another age of power scaling in this game now. Where it's... <laughs> this, this is like... Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna spoil a one like twenty year old anime here. So fair warning, try not to listen for the next twenty seconds, but or thirty seconds, but in Bleach when uh, you go from the whole Soul Society arc and that entire thing resolves to Aizen's betrayal, like there's an entire whole pow power scaling thing with the holification, and that's kind of what it feels like we're doing now in path but now that we're going from our 16s to our 17s because we got our we got our our cirrus then we got our pinnacle bosses then we got our maven then we got more ubers and now we have tier 17s and just the old era of power scaling is not really going to exist anymore, I don't think. Like, I think we're we're coming to the point where 5 million DPS is not much. I used to consider a build that reached 2 million to be a successful tier 16 build. But at this point, I don't think... Like, I wouldn't want to attempt a 17 with below 5 million Yes. You want to cap at least one defense against attack slash projectiles and against spells. So, like, I don't know. High, high armor, high max resistances, high spell, spell suppression, or high spell dodge, high evasion middling resistances kind of thing like you need you need a lot at least if you want to try out a lot of the new content which is unfortunate because i like making cool new builds i like all of that but we're entering, but again, when you're entering a new power scale, everything has to change. And that means that everyone who does not adapt, so let's say new players who don't know anything about the meta, are playing the game, and they're just fucking around with their fun little build, they finish the campaign, they go into, <laughs> they go into maps, and they're like, oh, well, fuck me, I guess. <laughs> And then they hit the same thing again with red maps, and then they hit the same thing again with purple maps. There's a lot of power scaling going on. Oh my gosh, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Okay, last map. Or last map of. Uh... Of the demonic onset. Yeah, because we just have arena now. This is the last map. I'm gonna, gonna go all out here and I'm gonna make it a 40% serious map. Airy. Say it that way, because it really doesn't feel like much of a difference anymore. Welcome to the Tier 17 Power Scale. 
Do you do red maps? Okay. Do you do purple maps? Well, that's a big deal. The pro one of the big problems with one of the big problems with uh, power scaling going up like that means that things that are underperforming are going to just underperform harder. Like it's not going to get easier. Them. You want to play a chain hook build? <laughs> no. I mean, you couldn't play. You couldn't red map with a chain hook build to begin with. You certainly can't now. Okay. Wow, I managed to get three separate jewelry things. Uh, jewelry, delirium. Okay. Uh, okay, what was it? I don't see under weapons. I don't think that's actually valuable. Yeah, I mean, you can brute force both things with money if you put enough, throw enough money at it, but, like... That's not... I don't feel like that's normal gameplay anymore at that point. That's like jo Joseph's, uh uh default attack build. Like, yeah, he did it. He was given... Multiple mirrors worth of of currency from his uh, witch chat to be able to do it, and that was an amazing thing. But that's the it's yeah. It's sad because that does kill build diversity a lot, and a lot of those builds need uh, the type of buffs that I don't know if GGG is worth consider it or it is uh, willing to consider. Actually, I mean, they've made some pretty notable changes these days. They seem to be getting used to the mo to more modern ideas now. Like saying that they'll put an auction house in uh, AoE 2 because they know it's expected of them and stuff like that. They're actually aware of that. Of what and I know they don't want their build, like... I know they don't want builds to just be, like, three skills. Just Toxic Rain, Split Arrow. Not Split Arrow. Toxic Rain, Tornado Shot, uh, Detonate Dead. Spectres. I think, what else are, like, the mainstays? Arc. Explosive trap. Wow, the mob density in this is really impressive now. I like this. I guess plus 100% mob density is a big deal. Okay, let's deal with the Breach Lord before. Oh, Delirium locked him. Oh, no, no, no. Still alive. And distracted by my totem. Oh, never mind. Anyways, they might be willing to, to make some changes to the lower like the lower performing skills because they did they did make changes to some of them and there's no point making changes to those things if they're not going to go all the way anyways so seeing where we are now they are probably going to do something about it 
Because, like... Okay, I have, a, I have a pipe dream, and I know... I know this will never happen. I re... Oh my god, revive everything! Yes! That's so cool! <laughs> um, I know this will never happen. But something that I really want is to one day do a conversion trap build. Or a build that incorporates conversion trap. Which, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, because, I mean, why the fuck would you, seeing it's a useless scale, generally? Uh, conversion Trap converts the enemies it hits to your side, so they fight for you. I don't think there is really any way to scale that. And their damage is pretty much n nil, but it's a cool concept. Completely useless against bosses who have no creatures with them. Is getting a lot more interesting that we're on the fourth. I kind of wish I went for 60% delirium rather than just 30, but eh. I also want the video to actually not be just choppy shit. I don't know what it's like right now. Actually, I can somewhat play while looking at OBS, and it looks okay. This is me only looking at OBS right now. Bit hard with the perspective to hit things. I'm going to do the boss while not looking at my main screen. No. Yeah. Here. I see you out. Where's the third one? There you are. Yeah! <laughs> I did the boss while not looking at my main screen. Oh. Oh, wow. Everything's so big now that I'm looking back. <laughs> My uh, OB my screen in OBS is like 800 pixels wide, instead of the near 2,000 that I'm used to. So it's a big difference. <laughs> Wait, I thought I did a Breachstone earlier. Did I not do a breach on earlier? What the fuck was I doing then? Oh, I think. Oh, okay. I think I did the safe house that has the exact same map as the Ulanatol's breach stone. No, I did the same map that was the same as the Tull's breach stone. That's why I'm confused. And here I thought I killed him and just did not fucking care because kind of not. That impressive compared to everything else we've been doing. Okay, so we're actually going to try to do a tier 17 now. I'm going to try to, to roll this so it's as tame as humanly possible. No possession. Players have negative two to maximum number of summoned totems. Okay, so I think that means I just could not use my totem. Oh, Ruins of the Syrian Exarch. No. No. 
Not suppress, nope. You have souls, no. Possessed, no. <laughs> Petrification, no. No. Curses are. Heal charges. That's actually not bad, because none of the curses do anything to me. Okay. In that case. Scarabs. Stability. Can I add influence to this area? <laughs> Just make it even more chaotic? Okay, this has an increased amount of scarabs and map drop. Do I want to do anything with the maps? Not really. It's strong boxes. That sounds good. Maybe I shouldn't do that. I ideally want things that will not make this map progress slower. That would suck. You know what? Okay, I'm just going to do cartography. It's, they're simple, and they're not going to make the map harder. And we don't really need harder right now. We need just simple things. <laughs> Iced. I want to make sure that we're definitely getting good stuff that we want. Uh, uh, okay, so we're going to replace all of this. Harry. Actually, I'm going to switch that. We have a higher chance of getting corpses and embers, seeing as evasion doesn't matter to us. Add Okay. So think that we get extra scarabs. Add some synth assassin. Okay, not that. The only one I have. Okay, those are Templar ones. Templar. Templar. <laughs> okay, so we have Templars and we have Syndicate Assassins. Yeah, we're... This theme is nice, but no. Okay, we should be good now. Okay, I'm gonna le I'm gonna go in there with no omens. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to put an omen on it for when I get to the boss. And not before that point. Okay, wait, what am I what do I need to be scared of right now? Okay, monsters just hit hard. I mean, yeah, they always do. Um Monsters can steal your st your charges. I don't want to get hit in melee if I can avoid that. And I don't want to get hit if I can avoid that. <laughs> Okay, okay. That's a bit much. Now, wouldn't you say? Okay, my goal here is to get to the boss. Because I care way more about being the boss than I do anything else right now. 
done I've done this content before. It's the boss I haven't killed. Okay, I should not have walked here. This is a bad idea. Okay. okay. Decoy totem. And pound the decoy totem. Cool. Everything attack the decoy totem. Oh. Oh, I guess that's all the XR stuff that just spawned. It's amazing just like how how many things get removed by doing things like the Kirak missions or the memories which are function like Kirak missions. You don't have your Atlas passives. You don't have influence from anything. Or or Maven Witness. You don't have your league mechanic, your lantern. You don't have any scarabs or any crafts at all. With, with Hirak missions, you can't even re-roll the, uh, the modifiers on them, so, like, a lot of, lot of things that are just stripped out for that stuff, and I really hope that they make some changes there, because they're, I don't know, we're coming up on the point when that's just not enough for people. It's making Hirak missions not worth running. I guess they're probably most worth running when you need the uh, map completion. I'm going to leave that down there for now. I put Syndicate Assassins as, like, the top thing. Why am I not seeing Scarabs dropping, like, constantly? No, I mean, I, I'm getting enough Scarabs that that's possible. Okay, well, I just felt like there was too few. Out. Slowly getting there. This... Okay, that's... Portal up a bit. My goal is to... fight the boss. So I'm trying to skip the extra content till after. Whoa, okay. Some of this stuff does enough damage that I don't know if the decoy totem even matters. Because it just gets raced. Yeah, that one that one did not stand a chance. Maybe it's about my placement though. At least it'll drag things to its location. And then they have to refocus on me. Okay, third time. Third portal. Okay. Therefore, those fireballs put someone's head out. I think that might be their plan. I think they're fireballing me with intent to harm. Uh, 
Uh, nope, I shouldn't be going that way. Nope! I focus on attacking and ahead of me, or that might actually be better doing. Oh. Ouch. And we're progressing so much quicker than that last map we, we did uh, on Thursday. We, we spent an hour and 20 minutes in this map because of the stupid less life recovery shit. That was awful. Only to die right outside the boss room. That was, was so painful. That's a bit much, all in one spot for me. Oh, oh. And this is real easy without volatile cores or shapers or union of souls or anything like that. And also I said that while immediately dying. <laughs> Man, this is so easy. Drops dead. Uh. I got the cornucopia scarab though, those are with 40 C. Okay, I really need to stop using portals though. I might as well clear this little section out over here. Thing. Oh, okay, I'm clear. Okay. There. Oh, what just hit me? Sling hit me. Sling nasty hit me. What is that down there? The rare something. Okay, I'm gonna put oh, this. Not the, the problem rare, though. That over there. You! Okay. Okay, at least we got that dealt with. I wonder if I should check the harvest to see if there's a legendary seed in there. I probably should check it. I don't have to do it. Check it. Nope. That's a bit much. I turn them over there to distract them a little bit, please. No. Oh, fuck. I didn't notice anything. One day we're going to get this.
I need to not stay in one place, even if I seem safe. Because who knows if I'm, like, standing on top of an attack that's hurting me or whatever. Uh Wow, that is a large order. Um Twenty-six. And it'll be four hundred. That doesn't... That's... That... That math doesn't sound right. Okay, try not to die to this. Need to clear this area out so that I can safely walk around outside the boss room without being murdered. Ow. Okay, what is going on here? I'm a co shaman, that is the thing. That's... That doesn't make sense, mathematically. 26 times 40 is 1,040. But by 113 right now, that's 9.2 div. Even if they were looking at the Divine version, the Divine version is... Two Divine for five tattoos, which would be eight Divine for 20. And that'd be at least 11 Divine there. I think they're, they might actually be trying to, like, change the price and hope I don't notice, but... In the wrong tab. No, it's not in the right tab. It's
I think they're just gonna. Today's stream has, has been really weird. God, I have to do math. That would be 5 div? 13. I... Yep, yep, that's it. It's a tiny discount, but I don't mind. That's honestly, that's still an extremely good deal. I mean, I made—I mean, I just made this money by flipping currency. Like, it did take at least forty-five minutes to get all the currency together, but like, it's—it still wasn't all that bad. Okay, we're actually at the boss room now in Sanctuary. Put the portal up here. And we are going to do this boss. So this is Lycia, Herald of the School. I am not very familiar with her abilities. So that's a thing that I am going to have to be aware of. Oh no. Please go look at my decoy totems. I'm not good enough to deal with you directly. I don't know how to deal with her attacks. So I don't know how to how they work. I guess I have to, like, go around her when she beams. Make sure that she doesn't beam directly on me. Nope. And I guess it's the same principle as most bosses. Just don't stop moving for any reason. And you're good. Yep. Which is what I just did. And then I died. It's, it's almost like I was right when I said, if I stop moving for any reason, I'll die. <laughs> If only I'd listen to my own advice. I don't know if they can be taunted, I'll be honest, but I'm still gonna try. Nope. Oh no. Oh no. Wait, what? Who are you? Oh, it's Bidat. It's the toilet demon. No, because, like, day. That's, that's, that's not a good joke, but still. I still have a portal. This is probably my last life. I will eventually get better at this, though, if I do it more. So, can I just sit here and tank it? Is that actually a better plan? Um, it wasn't necessarily a better plan, because the problem is I'm still getting hit by Lycia. So I think I'm done. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I'm getting better at it, I think, but the problem, I just, I don't know the attack still. I, I need to actually read up on what her attacks are so that I'm not just stuck in this loop of, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Let's see. Spinning staff. Summons copies of... Or of... A thing. By Heretic's ire. So sort of... Stuff. 
Okay, so don't get hit by the spinny thing. Fires fireballs. That return. Don't get hit by the fire. Okay. Uh. Swift death. Call weapon. Causes all spinning spears to move to the player's current location. Each staff deals. Or each, each spear deals physical damage partially converted to chaos on hit. Also deals another hit while moving out to random location. Melee slam flies into the air before doing a slam attack. Delayed blast deals heavy physical damage in area after delay. That's why I keep struggling with this one, because it's all physical damage. Uh. Okay. Okay. So I guess the big red circle on the ground was delayed blast. And then this tornado beam deals physical damage partially converted to chaos and it continues beam in front of her. Tracking the beam bursts wider at the end of the channel. Okay. And lightning maze. Fires random patterns of lightning bolts that expand outwards in a maze pattern in the center of the earth. Actually, those might not be the same as the sanctuary one. Double check, because this is kind of... This, this is not Lycia, this is Nightmare of Lycia. Okay, so she has all of those skills. That's normal. Except for delayed blast, there's four smaller blasts around the target area as well. At 50% health, uh, Lycia goat becomes invulnerable, okay, which is what we saw, and she summons Bidat. That has a leap slam, a stab, a snipe lightning arrow with conversion to lightning, and a scythe cleave that reduces life and energy recovery rate. Okay. Lightning maze. Fires random patterns of lightning bolts that expand outwards in a maze pattern. Okay, so that's the normal lightning maze. So... Technically... I could put, I could swap on some sort of, uh, I could swap on a Topaz Flask. Topaz Flask, even in my, find one. I had to find one. Okay, well, those, after the increased effect, those will give me about 9% extra max lightning damage. Max lightning resistance, I mean. That would help me there. And that could help me. I could replace my quartz flask there with it. That would work. Because fireballs, the fireballs, which seem to be the least important thing, are spells. Spinning stabs and the melee slam and the delayed blast and the call weapon are all physical. Most of Badat's skills are also physical, except for the one lightning skill. Yeah, so the most dangerous thing is the lightning maze, which is the, the blobs of, like, the round circles that are expelling from the center. Honestly, just, like, by looking at the dat, it looks like you, or Baydat, it looks like I can pretty much just tank anything she does. Because everything she does is just melee attacks, and I'm an evasion character. So I should be fine. And I have some physical damage reduction, which should also help me. My only issue is that it reduces life recovery when it hits you. But the debuff is only 33%. Not that bad. The, the biggest deal is physical and lightning. So if I can get some sort of lightning defense, I think I will be doing much. I think that is the main thing. So 
And to get myself a topaz flask with all res on. I think that is that is my my thing uh, um for for next stream. I made a note of that to myself. So that's what I'm gonna do for next stream to try to beat Sanctuary. Because obviously I need to do something to change the way that that fight is going. And I'm trying to brute force it by not having to jump around over the uh, over the lightning maze stuff, because the lightning maze while fighting Badat is a pain. Actually, I could just focus entirely on the Lightning Maze and doing damage to Bad Badat and not actually try to dodge her in any way. That's a possibility. Because I don't think her skills are going to be incredibly dangerous to me, assuming I'm not unlucky with evasion. That might actually be my better plan, because, I mean, I want to prioritize the actually dangerous stuff. And then if I screw something up, I'll have the Topaz Flask to help me a little bit. And I'll make sure that I have a Nico on that map. So, at 76% Lightning Res, the Topaz Flask will bring me up to 85%. And if I get Nico with Sulfite Intoxication, I can bring myself up to 88% Lightning Res. I... I think I'll be okay there. Yeah, okay. I think I'll be okay there. Oh, the other issue is that conversion, the physical conversion stuff that I had on the map is incredibly dangerous. Because it was physical damage converted to 300% of a random element. And everything they both do is physical damage, so... Biz conversion is very dangerous. Conversion on sanctuary. Biz conversion on sanctuary map is very dangerous. Don't roll. Okay. I like to make little notes for myself. Okay. Today was a bit of a weird stream. Thank you all for bearing with me, and I hope you all enjoyed seeing the content and. Thing, the bit of, bit of the behind the scenes of how I design things as well. Thank you all for coming today. I appreciate you all very much. For everyone who's here and has been here, great. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe on the uh, YouTube channel. This will be going up on at Black Cat Streams tomorrow, as well as on at Black Cat Studio. A new highlight will be going up. Then uh, again on Friday. Or then on Thursday, we'll be having another stream here on at Black Cat Studio on Twitch. And another video will be going up on at Black Cat Studio and at, at, at Black Cat Streams on Friday. That is the, the current week going on. And we will see how things go. You're very welcome, Pyro. I hope you all have a great week. And I will see you on Thursday, 2.30 p.m. PST, 5.30 p.m. EST. Have a great night, everyone.